Hi and welcome to Academic Compliance Academy. In this video I'm going to talk about consumers and compliance because I got the question, should consumers consider compliance? So let's look at some definition. A consumer is a person who purchases goods and services for personal use. So that's you and I going to the supermarket buying something that we need. So what does that have to do with compliance? Put up the definition here on dynamic compliance. I'm just going to break it down to three small elements so we can look at similarities and differences. The first part, an actor is a complex organization and conforms its behavior to a set of norms, regulation or requirements. The norms, regulation or requirements are external and internal. Hmm. So can we say that this equals a consumer? Well, a consumer is an actor an actor behaving to societal norms, own norms. There might be regulation and there might be requirements from your peers, regulation, what well, we, you're not allowed to pass a green, uh, red light. And you have both external and internal norms, requirements and regulations. So in that sense, yeah, it fits pretty good. So there is though the small element of a complex organization. It's a consumer, a uh, an organization? Well, not really. Is a consumer a complex organism? Well, that we can say yes, but it's not an organization. So there are some similarities here and differences. So it might be relevant compliance in terms of being a consumer. So let's look at the second part. The behavior of the act is influenced by incentives or compulsion since the actor would not necessarily be conformed with the norm without the incentives. The incentives may also origin from an internal alignment with core values. Hmm. Do consumers act based on incentives? Yes, we do. If I, as a consumer, have an incentive to do something, I act in accordance with that incentive. We also act when something is on a, when a product is, has a discount, well, we act as that's an incentive. But we also act in line with our core values, our personal core values. So here we're not talking an organization that has core values, Here's, we're actually talking about our own core values as human beings because a consumer is a person, a human being. So we can actually tick this box up, tick it off because we are acting in accordance with incentives and also our own core values. Because when I act, I do it in line with my core values. And there might even be actions that I'm not willing to do because it would go against my core. So let's look at the third part. The actor's behavior is not limited to the functional character of an action, but includes an underlying understanding and execution of how the actor will ensure conformity with the given norm, regulation and or requirement. So here it becomes a bit more complex because this is compliance. If you do not think about how you ensure conformity with your own core values. Well, then you are not compliant. But should you do this? Are you, whenever you go out and do grocery shopping, do you really think, oh, I need this to be organic because this is what fulfills my need. I need to be good to the environment. So I need to buy these certain products. Well, then you are thinking about how to make an alignment between your behavior and your how to conform with your core values. So we can say that there is a link between compliance and consumers because we do think about these things. We might not do it all the time, but here it's also just that our behavior is not limited only to the buying, but also to the reflection on how we buy. So, in short, should consumers consider compliance? Well, yes, they should. And there's another thing here, because it is actually really important that consumers consider compliance, because consumers are the driving factor when we talk about demand. So, 
up here, I put a model, just just a simple model saying, okay, so we have a product, uh, supply chain product line here. So we have some raw material going to the supplier, going to the manufacturer, going to the distributor, retailer and consumer. And then people often think, no, but I cannot affect this product chain. Well, you can, because the last element between the consumer and the raw material where the whole production starts, that is your demand. So if you demand that the raw material is organic or has a low CO2 level when they are trying to manufacture stuff. Well, your demand for something will affect the product line. So as long as consumers think in this sense, they can actually be the ones driving the compliance both for corporation and for member state, for society in general, and push it forward. The good agendas, what we really want, our societal aims. Because sadly, companies are typically driven by capital gains because their owners want something back from their investment. And as long as they are doing that, well, it's kind of a to the consumers to make the big move because consumers can change their behavior. I know that we are limited by resources. We are limited by time. You might not always have the time or the resources to make the right choice when you're buying stuff, but you just have to ask yourself, am I buying the right stuff? Because this is why it is important. Should consumers consider compliance? They're, yes, they should. And every consumer should ask themselves. Are, typically, if I look what I have been buying for the last month, is that in line with my core values? Is it in line with what I think is important for society? Did I need 10 pair of pants when I'm not going to use none of them? Well, not if my core value is that we need to be living in a sustainable environment, we need to produce less, we need to consume less, then I have done something wrong and I must change my behavior to stay compliant, but also to drive the agendas of compliance to my own core values in society. So yes, Consumers should consider compliance because they are a big part. They have an immense power. They have a huge impact on how we in the society, how corporations can reach societal goals and reach a good level of compliance. So this was just a short video, a short fly in on the relationship between consumers and compliance. So stay tuned, subscribe to this channel and let's talk more about compliance.